and we'll get started momentarily. Here we start recording. Um, and in the meantime, we know that we're very lucky to have folks joining in from all over the world. So please feel free to introduce yourself in the chat, where you're calling in from, uh, which organization you're associated with any. We'd love to connect and just learn a little bit more about you. So again, please feel free to introduce yourself in the chat. Okay, I see more and more people are rolling in. Um, uh, Devin, do you think this is a good time to get started? Yeah, I think we can get started. Awesome. Okay, uh, we'll have people joining in. Um, but again, hi everyone. My name is Saida Rizvi and I'm one of the co-chairs of the Young Leaders and Young Professionals Program. Um, I'm, jo I'm joined here by my lovely fellow co-chair, Devin. And in today's session, whether it's your first time at CSW or you've attended before, um, our main goal is to try and provide you with an overview of CSW 67 and provide an introduction to the UN CSW process and really zone in on what are the avenues of participation for young people in these spaces. So excited to kick off that conversation and share all of that awesome information. And I think to start us off, I'll pass it over to Devin. Thanks so much, Saida. Um, so we're going to get started with a couple of polls just to see, um, you know, who we have in the room, your experience with CSW and advocacy. Um, so I am going to launch the poll. Um, let me know if you can see it. Okay, cool. So there's four questions here, um, and I'll just give y'all a couple of minutes to, um, to answer. Um, yeah. So the first question is, how many times have you attended CSW um, or NGO CSW um, forum? Second question is how much experience do you have advocating with member states nationally or locally? The third question is how are you planning on engaging at CSW this year? And the fourth um, is actually meant for the end, but you can answer it now too. How confident are you feeling about engaging in CSW this year? All right, so I'm going to close that. Um, could one of my team members kindly share the results? They don't come up for me. I think they might be coming up for one of y'all. If not, we don't have to share the results. OK, we won't share the results but um, it's definitely some good um, data for us to have just so we can know who's in the room, what um, kind of uh, programming we can give to y'all in, in the future, um, depending on uh, what your experience is and what you need. So I'll just go through these. All right, so I'll just quickly go over the agenda for the session and kind of the purpose for this event. Um, so as I had mentioned, it's ultimately just going to be an overview of um, the process of the CSW and the NGO CSW forum, how to engage in that process, um, some of the notable um, frameworks and uh, like documents that are related to and helpful in advocacy. Um, yeah, so we'll start with a just general overview of the space um, and an introduction into the UNCSW process and the negotiations process. 
We'll talk a little bit about some frameworks related to CSW 67. We'll hear from our advocacy and research group who has prepared um, key recommendations for the zero draft. Um, we'll talk about digital advocacy and how to advocate online in a digital space. We'll go over the youth spaces at the CSW 67 um, and some spaces that y'all can join that are specifically geared towards youth. Uh, we have a couple of updates from ourselves, uh, YYPs, and we will have a Q&A at the end. Um, we will have that Q&A at the end, but also throughout the session, feel free to please put any questions in the chat. Um, my team will answer what they can uh, in the chat, but we'll also take note of the questions um, for later as well. Um, all right. So next we have our lovely chair, Hootie. Um, over to you. Thank you all and thank you Devin for always organizing exciting meetings um, and it's always so good to see so many people from all over the world joining. I am shocked, I shouldn't be shocked anymore that over 50% first time CSW, I feel like every year we, we are doing something right when we're attracting more and more new advocates. At the end of the day, we are here to improve gender equality globally. My role is to give you a quick overview of what is CSW Commission on the Status of Women is one of the commissions that meets annually at the United Nations. The Secretariat is UN Women and the theme this year, and I, I can actually probably share this link with everyone and I'm sure you already hopefully have checked this out because what we do at NGO CSW is to support this commission, right? We partner with UN Women and others to bring global women and girls' voices to be heard during the commission. To be part of the commission on the status of women, you have to be part of an ECOSOC accredited organization. And those who have tried know that it's not that easy sometimes to get ECOSOC accreditation. And more importantly, it's not that easy to get visas and have funding to show up at the commission. And we were, one of the better parts of the pandemic was that we were forced to actually experiment with online advocacy. And we are pleased to say that it has actually worked for us. And we have quadrupled our engagement. And as I said earlier, are very impressed with the numbers of advocates that keep joining us to have their voices heard at the commission. So I wanted to really just give you this overview quickly. And we, I'm here, I will look at your questions in the chat and answer them. And hopefully you will all walk away today after this with better knowledge and more confidence to be a better advocate for gender equality. I hope I did that right, Devin, and thank you for having me here. Um, did you go over the priority and review themes? Yeah, I actually okay. put the link in, but I can just also read it out loud. It is the innovation and technology change, education in the digital age for achieving gender equality and empowerment of all women. And then we also have the review theme, which is challenges and opportunities in achieving gender equality and the empowerment of rural women and girls. Um, and, and the link will give you even more information. There's just way too much information on both on the commission side and the NGO committee side, um, but hopefully it will make sense overall. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much, Hootie. Um, yeah, as Hootie said, and it's in the chat, the um, UN Women website has um, all of the information about the official UN CSW 67. So it's here on the screen, but it's also in the chat. Um, so for all the information about the, the UN CSW, you can visit their website. Um, yeah, 
so I'll pass it now to Rosa Lazardi and Pamela Morgan, who are our NGO CSW 67 Forum co-chairs. Thank you so much, Devin, um, and thank you, Huri, and um, welcome, first of all. Um, I want to wish everyone a happy new year. We're starting a new year, new day, new opportunities, new issues, new problems, maybe old ones, but we're here together and um, we are energized and reinvigorated. So um, I'm Rosa Lazardi. I'm one of the co-chairs of the NGO CSW Forum, along with my colleague, Pamela Morgan, who will speak right after me. Um, first of all, um, again, I, I want to let you know that we're very proud to be two women of color heading as co-chairs of the forum. Um, we were co-chairs um, for last year and we're doing it again this year. Um, we're excited um, to give you this information. A lot is going to be thrown at you, but you know that we are here. Um, you can write to us to answer any questions at info at ngocsw.org um, or put your questions in the chat. Um, and I'll take a look at the chat afterwards and, and answer any questions. So um, I just want to let you know about our NGO CSW forum, what it is, when it is. It starts the day before the CSW. So it'll be on starting on March 5th and go through the course of the CSW um, until the 17th. And um, we are a gathering place for youth, for uh, all non-governmental organizations, for civil society, regardless of whether you have accreditation to the UN or not. We're really a space for educating ourselves, informing, uh, networking, and doing advocacy, and really learning. Um, it's a space um, that provides hundreds of events. Um, we have over 800 scheduled as parallel events, and you'll hear a little bit more about that from my colleague, Pamela conversation circles, which are in-depth focus groups of regional caucuses, a thematic caucuses. Um, this is throughout the two week period of the NGO CSW forum. Um, we are having um, a hybrid format, which means that we are um, projecting to have 80% activities online, 20% in person. Um, we're, we're doing the in person slowly, so there will be some limited events in person. I see from, from the poll that many of you are planning to be there in person, and that's great. But for those who aren't, we have the, the virtual. Um, opportunity, and we are happy to announce our the new portal that we're going to be using, which is WOVA. And, uh, you know, we, we took your um, inputs into account, we made adjustments, and we're going to be using WOVA, which has been used by other members and other conferences and other means. It, it has an app, so um, young people who are um, primarily on their phones can, can use it and facilitate engagement in that way. And you'll hear a little bit more about that um, in uh, later on in today's session. Um, but primarily, um, this is a place for for many of you. I see over fifty percent. This is a new. Um, you're new to the CSW, and that is so exciting because for youth and, and young people and girls, this is a place where you can gain experience, gain knowledge about how to advocate, how to um, integrate into the UN. Many of you wanna know, well, how do I get involved with the UN? And this is a place to do it. And slowly but surely, 
you know, we have um, videos and forums where you can learn more about it. And then for the two weeks of the NGOCSW, you're able to do it on your own and engage with people um, in person or online, um, especially. Um, so I, I just want to, um, let me see, just check to see if I've checked off all the, the notes here. Yeah, so I just want to say thank you and, and goodbye by quoting um, the words of a uh, young um, African-American poet, Amanda Gorman, you may know her, um, in her poem, and, and, uh, an ode we owe, which she presented to the UN General Assembly last September. I'm just gonna do the very end that says to anyone out there, I only ask that you care before it's too late, that you live aware and awake, that you lead with love in hours of hate. I challenge you to heed this call. I dare you to shape our fate. Above all, I dare you to do good so that the world might be great. I know I didn't do her much justice, but I hope that this motivates you. And thanks, thank you all for being here. Thank you, Rosa. I think you did her justice and it was motivational. It's wonderful to see a young woman have such an impact. So good day all and welcome. I'm excited to be here with you today to give you a glimpse of the NGO CSW 67 hybrid forum. So I think my first question is, why is CSW important? Firstly, this annual session is a valuable opportunity for us all to collectively review global, regional, and national progress towards achieving gender equality and women's and girls empowerment by identifying challenges and opportunities and sharing good practices. It is also an important space where member states come together to reconfirm their commitment to achieving these goals and setting new global standards, norms, and policies that, prom that promote gender equality and the empowerment of women and girls worldwide according to the theme of the session. And Hootie spoke about the theme. Secondly, the CSW's outcome documents, the agreed conclusions and resolutions are important advocacy tools because they contain so-called agreed language that was negotiated in which UN member states have publicly committed to and can therefore be used to hold governments accountable. Note, however, that some states put reservations on certain parts of the text, meaning that they will not implement this part of the agreement. It's therefore really important that advocates continue to try to influence these documents to ensure that they reflect an increasingly more progressive agenda. And we've seen it ourselves with member states doing mission visits, how they are encouraging us to be more progressive. So reasons to attend the CSW 67 forum. First, I'm going to say, the member states take notice of numbers. A year after, a year before last year's forum, where 27,000 people registered for the NGOCSW 65 forum, we found that member states took notice. And since then, we have had member states reaching out to include us in conversations and actions. Thus, our collective global voices are being heard more so now than ever before. So please attend, bring your friends and colleagues and join the movement to influence governments to see the strength in women's solidarity, helping them to begin to take us seriously. Use your attendance at CSW 67 as an opportunity to meet your country's delegations and to reach out to the representatives of your countries. You can do some research, find out who they are, see if you can meet with them, Look at C NGO CSW's talking points, our five recommendations, and use them for your conversations. And then let your own individual hopes and fears be known. We also encourage you to come to CSW 67 for learning and exposure. 
get information about good best good practices and take it back to your communities to affect change. Come to network, take advantage of opportunities to meet people. Whether you find a speaker that you like and follow up with that person after the forum, or if you find like-minded like individuals at a conversation circle, the opportunity to network exists even if you're in a virtual environment. Aspects of the forum that I'd like to point out quickly, parallel events, as Rosa stated, we're going to have many, we're going to have around a little less than 800 parallel events. They're going to focus on the theme. They're going to focus on violence against women. They're going to focus on climate change and they'll be offered on a 24 seven basis according to the time zone in which you live. We're going to have conversation circles on 10 uh, different themes. I'm going to go through it real quickly. Sexual and reproductive health, rights and justice, anti-racism, anti-colonialism, LGBTQI, violence against women and girls, the future of education, feminist and youth movements and leadership, economic justice and rights. The working group on girls is going to have a client is going to have a conversation circle and then freedom of opinion and expression. And these conversation circles are safe places where you're going to come and, and change ideas with other members of the global women's movement. They'll be moderated, but they are safe spaces using Chatham House rules. What goes on there stays there. As Rosa spoke, we're gonna have consultation day, <laughs> excuse me, on March 5th, it's going to be virtual and you'll be able to join from wherever you are. We'll have civil society briefings to keep us up to date with the negotiations, regional caucuses, so that people from the various regions can come together, meet each other, develop many networks right there and begin to develop strategy to push your agendas. We'll have virtual exhibit hall where it's going to be a metaphor for a real exhibit hall where we have uh, organizations come and distribute literature and talk about their, their organization. That's going to be virtual. Then we'll, of course, have the networking and advocacy, and there are going to be more than one advocacy session. So in closing, I look forward to seeing you either in person or virtually. Please stop and take the time to say hello if we pass and I don't uh, identify you, but please, if you see me, say something, say hello, let's have a conversation, a cup of coffee or something. I'd love to meet you in person. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rose and Pamela. Um, I will pass it to um, my fellow co-chair, Saida, who's going to give a little bit of an introduction to the CSW process and how all of that works. Awesome, thank you, Devin. And thank you, Pamela and Rosa for that amazing overview. And they already touched a little bit already on how the outcome documents that are part of the CSW process are essential with respect to holding member states accountable towards all the progress we hope that they make in terms of laws and policies. So I'll walk through how that outcome document com comes about essentially. Now, in a nutshell, the outcome documents are the agreed conclusions or the formal outcome of each annual CSW meeting. And they start with a zero draft, which is provided by UN Women. And this zero draft is essentially the first step in this process. And the document is the first point of negotiation where all UN member states, civil society organizations and NGOs add points related to the priority theme which they would like to see included. So again, the zero draft is where our initial negotiations start. Uh, next up, we have the compilation. Uh, now this compilation text is the updated draft that includes a group of proposed amendments to the zero draft as presented by the member states. So this is where we move into the next stage of the negotiation processes. Now, third up, we have the readings. Now, the readings are a round of presentations of government proposals and chances to discover member states' positions on issues. So again, it's a really great opportunity to listen where different stances are for different member states on different issues related to the priority theme. 
And finally, we have the final reading itself. Um, this has several possible outcomes, but the overall goal for the final reading is a con just to reach a consensus between member states to adopt the final outcome document known as the agreed conclusions. Um, now, there can be a you know, few possible outcomes during the final reading. Um, the first could be that all member states agree upon the final draft and the outcome document is finalized with official CSW 67 agreed conclusions. Um, that, that's the first potential outcome. The second is that the facilitator or chair proposes a final text based on the remaining member states' suggestions. So if all states agree to those docs along with those suggestions, it's finalized as the agreed conclusion. And lastly, the third potential outcome is that if all member states cannot agree on the final draft, a vote is taken. And even if the majority votes in, are in the favor of that doc, it is, it is still not considered agreed upon language. So there is a lot of moving pieces and engagement and excitement happening towards to, uh, throughout this uh, CSW process. Uh, and it's a great opportunity for you all here to participate on that process. Again, it's very exciting, it's very engaging, and it's a great opportunity to learn about the positions and the different jargon and policies and laws being utilized by different organizations and, um, and partners. So I think we talk a little bit about how you can participate in that process. I'll turn it over to Devin. Devin. Thanks, Aida. Um, yeah, so at this point, I'll talk a little bit about how you can actually engage in that process um, that Saida just outlined. So the first thing um, to do is to identify important issues and language recommendations um, for the outcome document. So um, you can develop uh, recommended language, so like specific language, or just um, you know, priority issues that should be included in the outcome document. Um, then you can share these recommendations and meet with receptive member states um, uh, and can set up meetings with them to advocate for these recommendations and issues. Um, share them on social media um, to get some more support. You can share them with other organizations and networks who could share them to their networks. Um, and this is a way to leverage um, the support in your advocacy with member states. You can go to member states and say, hey, here's all of the other organizations and people who are supporting these recommendations. We really have um, backing of a community. Um, and it's always good to continue to meet with member states, um, develop that relationship with them. Um, get updates from them, but also continue to advocate for your recommendations. Um, as was mentioned in like the negotiation process, the negotiations really happen between member states. So having that relationship with them is really important and a really great way to have your um, recommendations and your um, the issues that you're advocating for being included in the outcome document. Um, yeah, so now I will move on to what kind of advocate you can be. So this is, um, you don't have to pick just one, first of all, but it's important to kind of think about what kind of advocacy you want to do, how you want to approach it. Um, you really want to have like a strategy to be the most effective. So there are a couple ways that you can go about this. Um, you can be a digital advocate where most of your um, advocacy is happening online. So you can amplify your work and the issues you're passionate about on social media to garner more support. Um, and you can raise uh, like respectful debates online and in virtual spaces to get people talking um, and create kind of that virtual community. And you can also develop creative and kind of fun ways to engage your followers and people online, um, like video challenges, like polls, things like that. 
um, to uh, get more attention and get more engagement in your advocacy. Um, you can also work pretty much just within your civil society connection. So you don't necessarily have to just advocate with member states, um, but it's always great to network and connect with other like-minded or not like-minded NGOs and activists and other networks and organizations on these issues um, and the CSW 67 theme in general. Um, so this is a great way to kind of form partnerships with other organizations and people and networks um, for more powerful and effective um, campaigns and advocacy. Uh, conversation circles, um, this is kind of a good example of um, civil society connections, essentially. Um, so conversation circles, as Pamela mentioned, are kind of like an informal space to discuss certain topics. Um, and actually, the regional caucuses could also be included in this, um, where you're talking about a specific topic and conversation circles, but with regional caucuses, you're really focusing on the priorities and issues within that region. So um, participating in sessions like this um, are also a great way to meet people, to talk about these issues, um, and yeah, just like have informal discussions about them. Um, yeah, that aren't so formal. <laughs> um, we have outcome document negotiations, which we kind of, we have talked about so far. Um, so like I mentioned in the last slide, developing and advocating for different recommendations and input and important issues that you'd like to see in the CSW outcome document. Um, the best way to advocate in this um, area is definitely meeting with member states, and lobbying for your recommendations, um, and garnering that support from others as well. And last but not least, um, there are several different levels of engagement, which is always important to think about as well. So you could focus your advocacy on global issues, on local, national, regional. Um, so kind of just keeping that in mind, what um, your advocacy is really focusing on, what level, maybe it's all of the above. Um, but yeah, that's always something to keep in mind and kind of what your audience is and um, yeah, what level your advocacy, what you want it to be on. Um, next is, I'm going to pass it to one of our great interns, Allie, who's going to walk us through some of the significant frameworks related to CSW 67. Hi, everybody. Like Devin said, I'm currently an intern here at NGO CSW New York. Um, and yeah, excited to talk through um, some related frameworks to CSW 67 and the related party theme of innovation and technological change. Um, so kicking it off, um, we do have a human rights framework that grounds gender equality, advocacy, and women human rights in work in human rights and UN values as outlined in the UN Charter, which was signed in 1945. Um, next, we have the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, or as some of us know it, CEDAW. So CEDAW is a human rights treaty that is legally binding for countries that have ratified it. Um, it's almost universally signed with 188 signatories and 99 ratifications. Um, so CEDAW develops and clarifies the principles of gender equality and non-discrimination, outlines in detail the obligations of states according to international law, and requires governments to take proactive action to prevent the violation of women's human rights. Next, we have the Roadmap for Digital Cooperation, which is a roadmap in which all stakeholders play a role in advancing a safer, more equitable digital world, one which will lead to a brighter and more prosperous future for all, and this roadmap was prepared by the Secretary General's office. Um, the Beijing Platform for Action is another gold standard of women's rights in the international human rights framework. 
It's an agenda for women's empowerment that includes the 12 critical areas of concern, covering issues from political participation and economic justice to health and education, gender-based violence, and the environment. And the Committee on the Status of Women is devoted to the review and progress in the implementation of this platform. Um, and lastly, we have the Sustainable Development Goals, which I'm sure many of you know as the SDGs. So uh, the SDGs bring together the three dimensions of sustainable development, which include economic, social, and environmental development. There are 17 goals and 169 targets to meet, be met by all countries before 2030. The SDGs are universal, and they're based on the principles of human rights. Um, and I'm sure many of us are familiar with goal five, which is to achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. Um, and this is recognized as critical to the successful implementation of all of the goals. Thank you so much, Ali. Um, I believe we also put in the chat links to all of these frameworks for you to learn more about them. And also if you wanna like read through all of them. Um, yes, but next I'm passing it to Ivy who is one of the co-chairs of our advocacy and research group. Hello. So um, thank you everyone for being here and your interest. And so I'm gonna speak a little bit about the advocacy research group and um, what they did. So it's a core team of about 30, a little over 30 people and it's um, globally represented. Uh, many of them are with other NGO CSWs. Uh, you know, we're the NGO CSW New York, but there we have sister NGO CSWs in the regions and also Vienna and Geneva. And so we um, have this group who, since maybe like in the summertime last year, we start our research process into the theme. As you know, every year the theme changes and we're not experts at every theme. And so um, we do a lot of um, reading and researching um, and then we put together our recommendations. And so these key recommendations are then shared with member states. And this year we focus on five areas around digital technology and education. And so you're gonna see those five presented here. They're gonna come popping up because I don't have it by memory. <laughs> but um, so this first one is about, um, as I mean, you can read this, but uh, literacy and STEM education for girls and women and all their uh, diversity diversity and uh, the laws and policies to address privacy, autonomy, uh, dignity. So these are about um, human rights um, on digital platforms. And then this next one is um, data, AI innovations, uh, frontier data and AI innovations and ensuring universal access. Um, we found uh, and if I back up, sorry for backing up now, but we had these recommendations that they weren't just like popping up out of our heads and, you know, developed. It was a rigorous process. And the first step of that was um, a survey that went out. Some of you may have seen that survey. Um, it was sent to the listserv of the YLYPs in addition to the wider listserv. And it was quite extensive, I, I know, uh, over 25 questions and a lot of it, there were a lot of open-ended questions and we got hundreds of people responding to that. And so looking at that survey, we identified what like the top concerns were and definitely, and, you know, so this is how we, you know, came up with these recommendations and then studied, you know, tried to go with language that, maybe had not been agreed already language, but something that civil society would like to see. Um, and this, uh, there was concern about, dis you know, people with disabilities and older women and technology and, you know, accessibility issues. And I wanna 
go to that last one that I just talked about, the human rights issues were very big concern. Um, you know, things like cyberbullying and all of that um, came up quite a lot. Um, I think particularly with younger people, uh, I want to say. Um, yeah, so then the next one, the, the fourth uh, recommendation is on um, the financing financing um, digital technology, basically. And the fifth is uh, a standalone recommendation on young women and girls and empowering them and, um, and their leadership uh, within this uh, topic of uh, digital technology. And so I think that is all for the recommendations part. There are two action pieces. Well, there's one big one. You can be a supporter of these recommendations um, in that QR code. It's it's our website. Um, we also shared this through social media. And there are some nice uh, clips. Right now we have it in English, uh, Spanish, French, and what was that? Italian, I think, um, that share the recommendations. And we also developed a template for um, those who want to share it, uh, the recommendations maybe with their local or regional uh, government officials. So I think that's my part. We're we're like doing really well on time. I noticed a lot of time for Q and A, which is good because we're going to hear more from you. <laughs> so I'm going to stop. Okay, thank you. Thanks so much, Ivy. Um, and again, there's links in the chat to um, the ARG website and the full uh, recommendations, as well as this um, sign on uh, form. Um, yeah, and we have those videos that Ivy mentioned. So definitely check that out. Um, so next, I'm going to pass it to you. I forgot to mention oh, that right now we're working on briefs. Mm -hmm. So so basically, we have the five recommendations. And in order to support everyone in their advocacy, um, we, wanted, we want to um, provide like key language around each recommendation plus resources. So then when governments, member states come to us and ask, well, why are you saying frontier data? And then we say, oh, I can give you the site. It was blah, blah, blah report from this and this year um, because that's what they need in their negotiations. They need this documentation, this backup. So we're gonna try and create like a cheat sheet. It's gonna probably be around one page or so. Um, and that's being developed. And so by next month, it should be ready. And again, it'll all be uploaded on our website. Thank you, sorry about that. No worries. Um, yeah, so next I'm going to pass it to uh, one of our other interns, Carla, who is our communications intern. So she's going to go over um, digital advocacy and some tips for advocating online. Over to you, Carla. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, buenos dias, buenas tardes, buenas noches. My name is Carla Cordova. I am the communications on social media advocacy. Um, so, social media, sorry, at NGO CSW. And today we are going to share some tips about digital advocacy with you. And can we go to the next slide, please? Well, basically, we I, I wanted to share with you some tips. Um, this is going to be a really brief summary because there's a lot of information we can talk about when we talk about digital advocacy on social media platforms. But there's basically four important steps that we want to consider. The first one is center your goals. What is your purpose of having a social media platform? What is the, do you want to share? Do you want to discuss a specific issue? Do you want to share your projects? Do you want to get support on a specific activity? So we can work on a list with this information and this is going to be the main information that is going to lead to continue with the next steps. Next, please. Then we have to determine what will be the essential social media platforms we want to use. Every social media platform has a different nature. And according to that, we want to choose maybe one, two, or three social media platforms, all 
um, all depends if we are working by our own or we are working in a team. That, that's important uh, point to consider too. So for example, uh, Twitter is more related with short sentence, but sentence that can keep the um, the attention of the audiences. But we also have Instagram or TikTok of YouTube, which is more related with the visual part. We can share videos, we can share different information related with the things that we can see and we can hear. Uh, but we can share a lot of, we can't share a lot of links um, in, for example, in Instagram, it's a bit difficult. Uh, we also have Facebook, which, which is also really visual, very informative, and also they have really uh, very good tools related with group discussions. Um, finally, we have also LinkedIn, which is more related with the professional area of that book. We can share projects, we can work on networking. So according to that list, uh, you can think about, okay, I want to start maybe with one social media or two social media. All, uh, all depends on our time, our energy, and uh, how many people is going to be part of this digital advocacy. Next, please. And this is the really important topic too, is focus on prioritized content. Um, we can observe different information on social media. There's videos, polls, there's uh, challenges, trends, information, and we can feel this need to do everything, but it could be a bit overwhelming. So let's try to focus on important polls that we really need to have in our social media platforms. I'm going to share with you some of them. Uh, the first one is a presentation post. In this post, we want to talk about our project, about, about us, uh, more information related with what we are doing. Uh, we can also share some advice posts. For example, if we are working with women's rights, okay, some advice posts, um, I don't know, like three tips to help women uh, in some aspect, for example. Um, and also we can share a calendar post. Um, during the year, there's specific dates related with the issues we are interested. For example, last December, we made a campaign of the 16 days against bio gender violence. So we want to find what will be the specific days related to our advocacy and try to include these dates in our, um, in our calendar. Also, obviously, uh, some posts about events and our participation in different activities during the year. And finally, some normal day posts, which is more relaxed, uh, things that we do every day and share with our audiences what is the things that happen behind the scenes, what is happening when nobody's watching to us, what is the way that we are working. Try to give some natural, um, mood also on our social media platform. So this will be the important topic that is really essential to have. We can include more, we can maybe pick one, two or three of these. And according to our time, work on a schedule uh, in one month in advance in order to have a complete information and really organize an information that could help us to don't feel overwhelmed or to don't feel that we don't have enough time to work in on social media. And well, next please. The last step after working on all this information, now we can think about the visual part. How is gonna be the design? How is, what is, are gonna be the colors uh, that represent our advocacy project? Or how is gonna be the logo? What, which are gonna be the, the fonts, the letters we're going to include, and also the attitude. Um, in social media, you can share information in a professional way or maybe in a more friendly way, or it depends the, the way that you want to share your information. But it's important to consider that before deciding uh, the design, we need to think, oh, we need to work on all these uh, other steps. Usually when I, I work with different um, organizations, we want to focus just in the design and we forget this important part. It is going to lead what, what is going to be the information we're going to share. Um, next, please. So after this, there are some tips that we can include in, in our advocacy in social media. The first one is engage with our audiences. It's not enough just share information. We want to interact. We want to share comments. We want to react to their responses. So this is a really important topic. And the next one, please. 
Then we have becoming a skilled advocate. The idea here is try to be informed about what is happening around our topic in order to be a trustworthy advocate. So it's important to take some time of our calendar to read information, find news, uh, observe, I don't know, some videos, read some books, take some time to become a really skilled advocate. Next, please. And also uh, interact with the media, with other NGOs, with other advocates, and obviously with all the police makers in order to support and find help in our advocacy topics. And finally, this is a really important topic to have fun. Advocacy is important. Advocacy should be professional, but we also need some time to have fun, to enjoy the process. And if needed, also to just have a break, to, to rest, to maybe um, share this uh, activity with other people in our team. Because sometimes when we are working on social media, specifically if we are starting a project on social media, we can feel that, oh, there's a lot of information I would like to share, I don't have enough time, or, oh, we, we want to compare our work with other people. So let's try to be careful with that. Uh, I think the important, um, the main thing here is try to take, to be patient, try to consider this as a process. and. It's going to be a group of steps, step one, two, three, four. And if something didn't work, it's okay. It's, it's good to rest. It's good to rethink the how the things is going to be. So that will be the four, the, well, the main steps. And um, next, please. During the forum, this is a really important part. Uh, we want to share with you some topics that will be really important to think about it during the forum. The first one. Um, next, please. Well, what is the best platform to share this specific information? You are going to receive uh, or you're going to be part of different activities, discussions. So every time that we want to share something, let's take a moment to think what will be the best platform to share this information. The next one, please. And then is this information about my organization easily found on my page? This is a really important topic because we are going to new a lot of people to meet with a lot of representatives, a lot of advocates, and we want that they have information about us, how to contact with us, maybe an email, maybe a phone, or maybe what will be our social media platform. So please like, take this really seriously, um, how my information is going to be spread in our social media platforms. And also are my posts expanded my network? This is also related with the one of the steps with engage with their audiences. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's not enough just to share the information. We need to create discussion to um, let people uh, to help us. So this is really important in order to expand our network. Um, I also wanted to share, well, we're going to share this uh, soon with you but there's different applications that we can use to help our digital advocacy. In the case of design, there's a web page called Canva that we can use and they have different templates that we can use for create our post. In the case of the scheduling and calendar, we have Facebook Business Manager. You can create a specific calendar every month and schedule different posts uh, in order to have more time to, to continue with your advocacy. Um, then there's different audiovisual free resources. Um, one of them is Pixbay, uh, YouTube audio. In case you want to work on videos or make different things, we can take uh, this web page to get information like video or sound for free. Uh, well, there's different courses related to digital advocacy. I would recommend a Coursera or, or Udemy. They have really nice courses related with digital uh, and digital and social media and the majority of them are free. So thank you so much for your time. If you have questions, I'm uh, happy to help you. Thank you so much, Carla. That was so much information in the best way. Um, and I also at this point just want to um let all of you know that we will be um putting out an advocacy toolkit um so that'll include all of the information we've talked about today um in a little bit more detail um this is kind of just like an introduction um but that toolkit will have all of the information including lots of links to learn more about the different topics um 
So we will be publishing that at the end of the month. So keep an eye out for that. We'll send it to um, our mailing list. Um, yeah, so if you're like, oh my God, this is so much information, um, like trying to take notes or whatever, don't worry, we'll have this resource that will have all of this information and more um, available for you. Um, that yeah, it kind of just compiles all of our advocacy resources into one place. Um, so next, I just want to talk about some of the youth spaces that will be at the CSW 67 and NGO CSW forum. Um, so these are just some highlights. Um, there will definitely be um, a lot of parallel events that will be addressing, uh, you know, youth issues and youth activism and stuff like that. Um, but these are some of the highlights that are going to be hosted by um, ourselves or UN Women. Um, so the first thing is the Youth Preparation Series, which you all know about because we're here. Um, so this is going to happen every Wednesday um, leading up to the CSW, so for the next six weeks. Um, most of the events will be at noon, so at the same time as this one. Some of them will be um, a slightly different time, so keep an eye out for that um, and just make sure to pay attention to the time because um, some of them will be um, at a different time. Um, so we also, uh, UN Women will be hosting um, a the official youth forum. Um, which if you participated in CSWs in the past, you might be familiar with this. Um, it's usually, a, I think in the past it's been two days, but this year it's gonna be one day um, of youth, um, yeah, just like youth stuff for the CSW, getting youth um, engaged and all of that. Um, and for all of these things, more information about them will become available. Um, but for now, just maybe like make a note of them, mark it down. Um, but we will be sending, you know, all the, the details for all of these things to our mailing list and on social media and stuff as well. Um, so we're going to have a barbershop event um, that is going to focus on male allyship. Um, that's going to be in person during the CSW. Um, the date is to be determined. Um, we are going to have the youth morning briefing. Uh, if you participated last year, um, it's going to be very similar to the one we had last year. Um, like I think Pamela mentioned, we have those civil society briefings. Um, so this youth morning briefing will be one of those, but it'll be specifically geared towards youth. Um, and there will be a high level intergenerational dialogue. This will be a formal UN CSW session. Um, I believe one of my teammates will be putting in the chat the, um, the, the, the CSW program of work, um, which essentially is just the schedule of sessions happening during the official UN CSW, and that will take place inside the UN. So with this inter intergenerational dialogue, it will only be available to NGOs who have ECOSOC accreditation and have the badge. Um, yeah, but that will be happening on the 13th of March at 10 a.m. And then we will also be hosting with UN Women a youth safe space. Um, we'll send more information about this later, but it will be um, just a space in um, one of our venues. Uh, it will be open to everyone. You don't have to have a badge or anything. Um, but this will be a place for youth to um, come together to network a little bit. I think there will be some um, kind of like programs and sessions happening in that space as well. Um, and then lastly, there's going to be quite a few different networking spaces, um, both in person and virtually throughout CSW. Um, so definitely keep an eye out for those two. Um, and these networking spaces, we will have some networking spaces for just like generally people out of the forum, but there will also be some youth specific networking spaces as well. Um, yeah, so I'm going to pass it to Saida to take the next um, section. 
Thanks, Devin. Um, I'm really excited about the next section. If you can move to the next slide. Okay, so this is a quick announcement um, and I'm so happy again to make it. Uh, we were privileged enough this year to have the resources to sponsor five youth delegates to join us this year in person for CSW in New York. And we're so excited to announce our YLYP delegate champions who have worked closely with us for several years. So Carlos, Fernanda, Jose, Najili, and Truthi, we can't wait to see you in person in New York. And fingers crossed that Visa and Logistics and and everything all comes true. And we will also be sharing this announcement via email. But again, please feel free to congratulate our incredible youth delegates. And we'll be so, so looking forward to seeing them in person in New York this year. Yay. Yeah, I think um, a lot of them, if not all of them, are also here on this call. So definitely give them some claps, some yays, um, because they're here. So um, this is our next uh, event in the youth preparation series. So this is happening next week, same time, same place. Um, we will be sending out a save the date for that today. So keep an eye out for that with the registration link. Um, I believe someone is also putting the registration link in the chat. Um, and it's also on our website as well. Um, we're gonna have a great program for that. So. Uh, definitely um, sign up. And I think that's it for the main um, program stuff. So we'll open it up to questions. Um, if you could uh, raise your hand like in the Zoom little raise hand feature, um, or you can just put your questions in the chat and we will um, answer there as well. All right, I will stop sharing so we can see everybody. Okay. All right, so feel free to raise your hand um, in the little reaction thing, um, or just put your questions in the chat. I have not really been able to see the chat too much since I was sharing my screen, but I see that um, the team has been answering most of them. Um, yeah, so feel free to raise your hand. Um, yeah. Okay, I see, um, ooh, I'm gonna butcher this name. Ooh. Uh, Okuke, Mary Marvelous Moody, um, has a question. Do you want to jump in? Or you can put it in the chat. Hi, everyone. Greetings. I'm Okuke Mary Marvelous Moody from Cameroon. Yeah, I'm uh, a young activist and founder of a community, it's an association it's called the Teens for Teens Community. And we really advocate, especially for the rights of children and adolescent girls being the context of the Anglophone crisis. Uh, so as we know, Cameroon has been experiencing a lot of crisis and um, it has been threatening for the rights of young girls, adolescent girls and young women in, uh, yeah, the nature of the system is really is really somehow so there's a lot of work for us activists i just wish to ask that from the proposed main topics that will be handled during the csw event um i it's like most of them i get more towards the um the digital um encouraging girls maybe participation in the digital world is more about digitalization but then I also heard topics, main topics like, you know, viol tackling violence against women and girls and others. I wish to inquire if it's possible to have, you know, the part political participation and civic engagement of adolescent girls and young women as a main uh, topic during um, the CSW, because that is still really a very big issue that I think 
could, if handled on its own, could bring about, you know, a lot of policies that could be implemented. And, you know, it's just going to be a way to really discover some of the realities that adolescent girls and young women face, especially those within the suburbs, within these very, very interior communities in various parts of the world, such as my own part of the world, which is Cameroon, you know, especially within the context crisis. And I believe that several other people in various communities still have this issue of the political participation and civic engagement of adolescent girls and young women as a main, main, main problem. So is it possible that this could be like a topic on its own? That's just the question. Or is the CSW session for, for which we're going to have in some weeks ahead mainly geared towards you no know, digitalization, which is still good, but then that's just my question. Thank you so much. Devin, perhaps we can take three questions and then respond. And I don't know, maybe Saida, you should be the one to respond. If not, you can point to one of us to respond. <laughs> Devin, I think you might be muted. Nazia has her hand raised. And um, Oriana has a, uh, said she has a question in the chat. So, um, Nazia, go ahead. Uh, hello, thank you so much. Uh, I'm Nazia Nuri from Afghanistan. Um, actually, this is my first time uh, about CSW that uh, I'm joining and maybe it take me a lot of research to know more about it, but I'm really thankful for organizing this session. Uh, it was quite um, uh, interacting and it was uh, really uh, briefly describe everything. Um, my question is that um, uh, actually I, I, I cannot put it in a question, but just a recommendation that um, as you know, that there are a lot of crises going on in Afghanistan, especially around education. And this um, uh, priority theme in the CSW is exactly in a, uh, happening in a perfect time. So I want to know uh, more how we can get, uh, get uh, more um, uh, like productive, can be more productive in this event as Afghans. Like uh, I'm not seeing much more um, Afghans uh, involved in CSW. Is there any platform where we can see how much uh, like uh, people are talking in this uh, area about education uh, in, in Afghanistan? Uh, so we can network with them uh, or um, how we can like uh, more uh, focused or more um, uh, advocate for uh, Afghan girls and women in Afghanistan and especially in education uh, and the priority team of CSW. Yeah, thank you. Okay, um, Oriana, go ahead. Thank you so much. Uh, so well, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for organizing this. And my question goes in hand with the actual topic of CSW for this year, that is about dig digital innovation and technology. So I was wondering like in what ways can you consider that you can use innovation and technology to include women and bridge economic gaps existing between, between us? How can you leverage from this innovation and what do you think the discussion is going to be leaded in this forum when it comes to economic and digital innovation and technology, specifically with a focus on cultural barriers and countries or, or, or countries or, or middle economy countries? such as Venezuela and from Venezuela. That's what my question is. Thank you. Okay, I think maybe we should answer those questions and then we will go to the um, rest of the people with their hands raised. Um, I'm happy to take on Nazia's question about how to engage more folks in Afghanistan. Um, Anazia, first of all, welcome. We're so excited to have you here. And my recommendation would be to first reach out to 
your networks and see who are young people in your community who would be interested in joining um, and loop them in. You know, this is a platform where anyone, as long as they have an internet connection, are able to join. So definitely include people in your network. Um, and we're also, once we put out the more information about the event, there will be uh, events, I'm sure, that are specifically focused on South Asia and of, on Afghanistan and the Middle East. So I would recommend definitely attending those events with your um, network and um, connecting again with the people who are participating here. There will be representatives from NGOs, from government, from other member states who are passionate about what is happening down in Afghanistan. So uh, prioritizing attending those events and really you know, not being afraid to reach out to folks via chat, via email and connecting again with them and asking them questions, raising your voice where needed. So I think building those connections would be a great first step to ensure that your voice is represented and the voices of all your colleagues is also represented. And just to add very quickly, in today's news, um, I don't know if you, you've seen, but um, Amina Mohammed, who is the Deputy Secretary General, the highest ranking women at the UN, and Simon Bahus, who's the Executive Director of UN Women, are in Afghanistan to um, promote uh, women and girls' rights, education, and work. So I'm just going to put that in the link. So big shout out to, to them for being there. Um, Sima Bahuz is from that region, from Jordan. So I know that she probably has had, um, you know, some influence for, for being there. But I know that there is a lot of attention on Afghanistan, especially right now with what's going on in the region. Thank you for your question, Nazia. Can't hear, Hootie. I did the same mistake. I swear I clicked on it and it didn't. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, I started by saying, Okuku, I think I said your name right, and your uh, request for different uh, top themes and topics. We don't get to choose the themes, they are evolving, and member states get to choose every three, four years on um, what the next themes are. But that doesn't mean that we don't discuss, especially adolescent, and I put it in my chat, but anybody who wants to work with adolescent, please contact Beth Blissman. She already put her email in the chat. She does amazing work. So no matter what the theme is, that you make sure that both adolescent girls and boys' voices are heard within those themes. Even though we concentrate on the themes that member states choose, we also make sure that all the other important themes that apply to gender equality are weaved in. That's why we have the con as conversation circles and everything else. I just wanted to add briefly on Afghanistan. It's really important to note that we are lucky that um, Afghanistan has invited UN women to be on the ground there, which helps us advocate more than we can, for example, in Iran. Iran does not welcome outside uh, or UN uh, on the ground, which is why, you know, it's harder sometimes to advocate in certain countries when United Nations is not invited in. Now, that doesn't mean that UN always succeeds. Just like Rosa said, the um, high level UN um, individuals are in Af Afghanistan. Education is obviously very important. And yet we still have a hard time convincing the Taliban to make that a priority. So it's an ongoing fight. And unfortunately, I wish we, we would all be out of business as they call it, even though this is not our business, we're passionate about doing this, um, but, but it, it continues. And then I was gonna say about the tech and economics, I personally can't tell you what the solution there is, but that's why I think it's really important to have these conversations. I know there's gonna be uh, most of CSW, especially with member states and side events, will be addressing that, you know, um, access to technology and making sure that um, it delivers on the economic side. Um, I think we're just going to go for one more. Oh, Pamela yeah, wants yeah. to add to that. I just, yes, I just want to add that one of the best ways to learn about leveraging the um, 
digital innovation and education is to attend our monthly sessions. Each month, we have a session that is based on a different aspect of the priority theme. And the next meeting is tomorrow at 8 a.m. And you will, for each month, we are able to build on ways that civil society can better understand how to leverage the priority theme and how to better understand it. So please join us tomorrow at 8 a.m. And you can go to the ngocsw.org website to register. Okay, I think um, Jabreen has his hand up. Um, and it looks like that's the only other question. Go ahead, Jabreen. We also have at at our re oh, they just put their hand down. Um, at our Rimba also has their hand up. Um, and Jabrin, um, if you want to unmute and ask your question, go ahead. Or you can always put the questions in the chat too. Okay. Um, at our Rimba, um, go ahead. So good evening to everybody. Um, I'm Atarimba Belinda Maya from Cameroon. I'm a disability rights uh, advocate, advocating for the rights of persons with disabilities. And we know as um, persons with disabilities, we have a lot of gaps, um, especially when it comes to participation. So my question would be, how intentional um, 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 is the project, how intentional is the CSW um, um, 67 when, um, when designing project to ensure that persons with disability, they have a voice, um, they intentionally participate so that um, as far as digitalization is concerned, they too, they can be very visible um, uh, not just, um, it's not an aspect of just saying that they are there, they are recognized, but how intentional, knowing that they are a category of, pers of persons who are always left out, who are always left behind. So how intentional is all of this activity, this process involving persons with disabilities? Um, I can jump in just for like actual logistics stuff. Um, uh, in terms of in-person participation, um, all of our venues and stuff are ADA compliant, um, but also if you have any uh, you know, specific needs or requirements, please feel free to reach out to us and we um, will work to um, meet those requirements. Um, for uh, the digital aspect of it, um, well, I'll also say this, that the um, parallel event organizers, it is up to them uh, individually to provide um, uh, accessibility stuff. So it's really up to them to provide like uh, closed captions or interpretation or, um, you know, things like that. Um, so NGOCSW New York can't necessarily guarantee that every parallel event will be um, accessible, unfortunately, although we do, um, you know, encourage them and urge them to make their sessions as uh, accessible as possible. Um, so that's just one kind of like disclaimer. Um, but in terms of our events, um, we do try our best to be as accessible as possible. Um, sorry, okay. Um, we usually have closed captioning. Um, 
we some of our sessions will have interpretation unfortunately we don't really have the resources to have interpretation for all of them um uh the virtual portal is um accessible via a uh screen reader as well um but also like we do um we do take it very seriously so if you have any um, concerns or um, needs, please let us know and we will work on them as well. Um, yeah, anyone else want to jump in? Yeah, I actually, there is a very high, um, powerful disability network and I can't remember their name. And when I do, we will add it on the minutes, but we've worked with them and they're, yes, women enabled. Okay, this is why I can't do what I do without Devin. <laughs> Let me get the link for you because they're amazing and they work closely with UN women and member states. They, they have very high level access. So I would definitely reach out to them if you are working in that field. Here it is. And I'm sure Devin has it already. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, I did put their website in the chat, so definitely check them out. Um, and they usually do host parallel events with us, I believe. So they probably are hosting um, at least one event this year as well. Um, yeah, does anyone else have any questions or concerns um, or comments or anything? Um, you can raise your hand. You can also put it in the chat. Um, but also if you think of like a question later or, um, you know, in at some point in the lead up to the CSW or even during the CSW, we are available um, through email. Um, I will put our contact information up on the screen too and in the chat. Um, but we, um, yeah, so you can email us at info, I-N-F-O, at ngocsw.org at any time, and we will get back to you there. Um, we also have a special YLYP's email address, so you can also um, email us there at ylyps at ngocsw.org. Um, Georgina has two questions above in the chat. Let me see. Georgina. More information on civil society briefings would be great. When will these happen and will they be focused on updates around the outcome document and session discussions? Yes, so um, the civil society briefings, um, along with all of our um, events that we've talked about here, um, we uh, are currently working on finalizing the schedule and stuff for all of them. So we will, uh, they will be uploaded onto the virtual portal. So make sure that you are registered for the forum and logged into the portal um, to see the full schedule of events. But we will also be um, uh, sending emails to our mailing list and posting on social media and on our website a little bit with all of these events um, and the uh, details and registration links and all of that. Um, for the civil society briefings, yes, the main objective of these briefings is to, to get updates on the CSW process and the negotiations and the outcome document. Um, so we usually have uh, someone from UN Women, um, people from the Bureau um, there to um, both give updates, but also hear from us as well. Um, so we will definitely be sending that information out. Um, yeah, and like I said, the, the, the best way to make sure that you don't miss any events is definitely registering and logging into the portal because all of the events will be listed there. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, I think that's it. Unless anyone else wants to jump in with that question. Alrighty, um, cool. So if there are no other um, questions, like I said before, feel free to reach out at any point. You can also message us on social media too. Carla is always manning that um, and taking questions on there. Um, yeah, oh, and let me share my screen with, actually I'll just put it in the chat with our um, 
information. So this link tree uh, link has all of, oh, Carla's got me, um, has all of uh, the information, all of the links that we talked about today, but also we will be, um, uh, let me just jump in and answer Lesia's question. Um, will a list of presenting organizations for the forum be made available prior to the conference? Yes, definitely. Um, all of the parallel events will be on the um, portal as well, and they will have the organizations there. Um, also, the portal has a lot of really good um, ways to engage with other participants. So you can kind of search for people who are working on different things. Um, there's community boards. So I would definitely recommend getting on there and kind of, um, you know, messing around on there and seeing who's there and connecting with people that way. Um, yeah, but also the all the parallel events will be uploaded um, towards the end of this month, actually. Um, so you'll be able to see all of those events and the organizations who are hosting them. Um, but yeah, we will be, this is being recorded. We will be putting it on our YouTube channel um, and sending a follow-up email to our mailing list. Um, yeah, and I think that's pretty much it. Um, and we'll see you next week at our Rural Women and Youth event. Bye everyone. Thanks, Seven, great Thank job. You. Bye everyone. Thank Bye everybody. you. Bye everybody. Thank you.